Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Minish and welcome to another Minish Review. Today I'll be reviewing Natural Selection 2. Natural Selection 2 is the sequel to the Half-Life 1 mod Natural Selection and is developed by Unknown Worlds Entertainment. This game can be best described as a mix between Starcraft and Counter-Strike. Strategy and Shooter are combined in this multiplayer only experience. At the start of each match you get to choose between two teams, the Marines and the Aliens. The gameplay is completely different depending on which team you choose. The only thing they have in common is that each have a commander who has an overview of the battlefield like in a strategy game. The commander can give orders and construct buildings. These buildings give you upgrades and other useful effects like invisibility. The players that aren't commanders play the game like a first person shooter. To buy upgrades and buildings you need to earn resources. You do this by building extractors or harvesters on resource nodes. The other team also wants these resources and will try to cripple your resource income. There are team resources, which the commander uses, and personal resources, which every player gets to buy upgrades for themselves. The final goal of each match is to destroy the enemy base and making sure they can't spawn anymore. As I said before, both teams are completely different when it comes to gameplay. The marines lean more towards the classic first person shooter, you upgrade your weapons and other equipment which in turn helps you overpower your enemies. A few examples of weapons are shotguns, flamethrowers, grenade launchers and mines. You can also get jetpacks and exos. Exos are robotic suits which allow players to rain death and decay upon their enemies using two miniguns, one attached to each arm. The marine commander can summon extra robots to help you, scan spaces for aliens, give you armor upgrades, build sentries and so on. The aliens however handle things differently. This team has five different classes. If you gather enough resources you can evolve into another type of alien. First of all there's the skulks, the standard alien that doesn't cost any resources. Next up the gorge. This alien is more support oriented, he can heal and also build defensive structures like walls and sentries. The third type of alien is the lurk. The lurk can fly and is best used in hit and run situations. They can also leave a trail of poison gas behind them. Next up is the fade. This alien can move across the map very quickly and is able to do a ton of damage in a very short period of time. You could say he's the assassin of the bunch. And last but not least, the Onus. The Onus looks like a mix between a gorilla and a rhino. He has loads of armor and health. As an Onus you can easily charge into an enemy base and start taking it down, as long as you get some help from a gorge. The alien commander also differs from the marine one. You have to place cysts to spread the green stuff called infestation across the map. Aliens need infestation to build on. The upgrades for aliens also work differently. They're divided into three groups with each two upgrades. You have to make choices since you can only pick one upgrade from each group. For example, you can pick an Onos that can become completely invisible, has extra armor and moves extra fast or you can do something completely different. As a commander you'll never be able to research all upgrades so you have to think ahead. Do you see the enemy focusing on armor? Well try to find something to counter that. This gives the different matches a lot of variation. However, a lot of your game depends on your commander. A good commander can decide if you win or lose. Also, please don't try to play as a commander if you don't at least have a microphone to command your troops with. But even if your commander is an experienced player, that doesn't matter if the rest of your team isn't paying attention to his orders. Natural Selection 2 is all about teamwork, so if you're the lone wolf type of player, you're better off going back to Call of Duty. The graphics in this game look pretty amazing. There are loads of details and the first person view when you're an alien is great. The lighting effects and the growing infestation make for some pretty impressive visuals. However, as we all know, each game has its downsides. The maps in Natural Selection 2 might be huge and well designed, there are still only 6 in total. But you do have the possibility to make your own maps, so this will probably balance itself out in the future. There are also no tutorials. Ok sure there are a few movies but they don't explain everything all that well. When you play this game for the first time you'll have no idea what you're doing. This is simply because the game differs so much from the now standard modern FPS games. Admittedly if you can struggle through the first few hours or just ask for some help you'll be enjoying the game in no time. Conclusion, Natural Selection 2 isn't for everybody. 
Those who prefer a no-brainer run-and-gun game should stay away. However, if you want an alternative where teamwork is everything and complex strategies play a vital role, then this could be the game for you. The different ways to play and the combination between real-time strategy and first-person shooter give you a unique multiplayer experience. Don't get discouraged by the initial learning curve. The online community is very helpful, so if you need some help, then all you need to do is ask.